Welcome to WestgateWorks.com Bronze Pit Welder, How It's Used This is a piece of silicon bronze sculpture set up to weld some small pits using one bottom cable a few inches from the weld area where there is a lot of material. The pits have been marked, cleaned, and peened. The area to the left of the small pits has been fill welded. This was done before the foot switch was added to the pit welder and before learning that flux is indispensable to getting a good clean weld. The power level for these small pits and pellets is just right because there's a lot of material between the cable clamp position and the welding area. This shows a piece of silicon bronze sculpture set up for welding some small marked and prepared pits. The area is flexed and the pellet is moved into position using the flex to keep it in place. Well, after a bit of indecision as to which pit to weld. Notice the sparks during welding and the spot left by the welding tip. There was just too much power for this small pellet and it made a mess. This was using one bottom cable clamped a few inches from the weld area. Additional cable should have been used for welding this small pellet. This is an example of one of the things that went wrong while learning to use this welder. This piece of bronze sculpture is set up with three bottom cables for welding several medium sized pits. One pit was welded but missed the mark and was reclaimed with a 1 16th inch drill. The pellets are larger in diameter than the pits. The pit is fluxed, the pellets moved into place, and then welded. Likewise, the second pit is fluxed, the pellets put in place, and it's also welded. This close-up shows the completed welds. Note the pink ring around the weld buttons caused by the cleaning action of the flux. These are good welds. This is a demonstration of welding large pits. Three 1 8 inch diameter holes are drilled at various depths in this 10 pound bronze ingot. All six bottom cables are connected to the ingot about six inches from the weld area to provide as much power as possible. The first pit to be welded is about 1 8 inch deep. Flux is applied. This not round pellet is about 1 tenth of an inch in diameter and should be large enough to fill this pit. The tip moved a bit during the weld. So additional welds are done to be sure that the pit is welded. The second pit is less than an eighth of an inch deep. Flux is applied. This second pellet is slightly larger than the one eighth inch pit and should be sufficient because the hole is not as deep as the first hole. A few extra welds are done to be sure that the pit is welded. The third pit is about 1 16th inch deep. The pellet used is smaller in diameter than the pit. Flux is applied. This well showed that the pellet was much too small for this size pit and the welding tip sank below the surface of the surrounding metal, leaving a hole. Another pellet is used to finish filling the pit. The pellet is flexed and welded. The area of the three welded pits was ground and polished with red rouge 
to show the results of this welding demonstration. The first and second pits welded perfectly and are not visible. The third pit did not weld properly because the pellet was too small. Even adding a second pellet did not help. After polishing the surface, a ring is visible around the edge of this pit. It was painted with a punch to show the rough edges where the metals were not fused. This shows how a piece of filler rod, pounded flat and trimmed to size, is used to fill weld a slight depression on the workpiece. The welding begins at the center of the filler material and moves towards the edges. The location of this weld requires using a special corner welding cap. Notice that this weld was done prior to learning that using liquid flux for the welds is a must. This setup is for welding a pit on a thin flange area. The area is flexed and a thin piece of flat filler material is used instead of a pellet. This requires a two bottom cable to be used for more power. Welding a pellet on a place like this would be difficult at best. The excess filler is trimmed off. This setup is for welding a very thin edge. Two bottom cables are used for this weld. A piece of flat filler material shaped in a V and formed of the piece is used with a special V welding tip. This was done prior to learning that flux is indispensable to a good weld every time. The edge of the filler material is welded on both sides using the side of the welding tip. There are various tools used with the pit welder. The most necessary tool is this little doodad used for moving pellets into place. It's fabricated from a piece of wire flattened on one end and drilled and ground to make a small ring. The wire is bent to make it easy to use. The cable extends diluted flux, pellets of all sizes, flat filler material chips and strips, a file to keep the tip clean, a pointed punch, small jeweler's pliers for handling pellets, a piece of plywood with a wood post for holding things steady, plastic clamps for holding the workpiece, a variety of clamps with aluminum facings for clamping the power cables, a small hammer, pliers, metal shears, side cutters, and a piece of bicycle inner tube for insulating the unused bottom cables. We hope you enjoyed this video.